a war that's lasted almost a hundred years. This is what happened when the richest family in the world decided to create their own country. In 1917, the Rothschilds, the trillion dollar family that invented modern day banking, used their money, power, and influence to strike a secret deal with the British government. That deal eventually led to the creation of the country of Israel. But what makes this story more bizarre is the crazy personality of the man who orchestrated this deal, Lord Walter Rothschild. Walter Rothschild was an enigmatic mega billionaire with so much money that instead of using horses to pull his carriage, he imported zebras from Africa just to show off. This same billionaire also had a super weird hobby of gathering insects and bugs, eventually amassing over a million butterflies, moths, and other insects. The Jews are some of the most intelligent, industrious people in the world. However, for years, the millions of Jews scattered around Europe have been trying to secure a large piece of land to start the country of Israel. But no matter how hard they tried, they got nothing. That was until they linked up with the super rich Walter Rothschild, a man who could change the world with the snap of his finger. By the early 1900s, the Rothschilds were already the most powerful family in Europe. They were so wealthy that they had even given loans to the entire country of France to stabilize the economy. However, aside from their power, the Rothschilds also had a reputation for being extremely ruthless. They wouldn't hesitate to wield their power as a weapon, to bulldoze through their enemies and crush anyone who opposed them. If the Rothschilds wanted something, they better get it, or they'd be hell to pay. Walter Rothschild made the calls he needed to make, pulled the strings he needed to pull, and in 1917, the British government sent Walter an official letter promising to do everything within their power to provide land for the creation of Israel. That letter redesigned the map of the world. And if you need proof, we have a copy of that letter. November the 2nd, 1917. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations which has been submitted to and approved by the cabinet. So it's possibly the most famous letter in modern Jewish history, and it begins with three words, Dear Lord Rothschild. That letter, nicknamed the Balfour Declaration, is proof that it was the Rothschild family that created Israel. But there's even more evidence. In this interview, the head of the Rothschild family proudly explains how his ancestors created Israel. The interviewer begins by asking the question that was on everyone's mind. Why was it that this letter was sent by the Foreign Secretary to your great uncle Walter? The reason is obvious, because it was the Rothschild's money, power and influence that made the British government fall in line. Years later, Britain kept their promise to the Rothschilds and provided a large piece of land to start Israel. And in May 1948, the State of Israel was officially created. Although this was good news, the Rothschilds were just getting started. What the Rothschilds did next was even more impressive. They invested millions of dollars into Israel building schools, roads, and everything needed to turn that piece of land into a beautiful country. James Rothschild single-handedly paid for Israel's Congress building, while Dorothy D. Rothschild paid for Israel's Supreme Court building. However, the more money the Rothschilds spent, the more problems they created. Why? Because the land the British gave to Israel actually belonged to another group of people called the Palestinians. And that land dispute sparked the series of conflicts between Israelis and Palestinians that's gone on for decades. But we're not here to talk about the war. We're talking about power, specifically the power of the Rothschild dynasty. Whatever you've heard about how powerful the Rothschilds are is nothing compared to the true scale of their influence. YouTube has dozens of videos about the Rothschilds, but this one is different. 
Because instead of merely talking about the Rothschilds, we'll sift through centuries of history to reveal five times the Rothschild family used money, violence, and power to reshape reality and mold the world in their own image. Starting with the time when the Rothschilds invented the banking industry that we have today. And the way they did it is more brutal than you can imagine. The Rothschilds didn't get into banking because they wanted to make the world a better place. They did it because they wanted power. And this thirst for power started in 1744 with Mayor Amschel Rothschild. From a young age, Mayer lived by the code that money is power. But even though he needed money to get power, Mayer was born to a middle-income family living in the ghettos of Frankfurt. However, Mayer had a plan to go from rags to riches. As a young man, he began a money-lending business. He started with a small amount and gradually grew his capital. Though this sounds pretty straightforward, the big problem with money lending is that people sometimes don't pay back what they borrow. But Mayer was a hard man, and he did whatever was necessary to get his loans paid with interest. Even from a young age, he developed a reputation as someone you shouldn't mess with. Mayer also maneuvered himself to become the personal banker of members of the German royal family. Over time, Mayer's small money lending and exchange business ballooned into a successful financial institution. But despite all his success, Mayer knew that there was one enemy that could destroy everything he had built. And that enemy was time. As Mayer grew old, he taught his financial skills to his five sons. More importantly, he also taught them that success isn't only based on their ability to manage money, but also to manipulate people and situations to their advantage. The game of money is deadly, and Mayer taught his sons to be more brutal than anyone they faced. After teaching them everything he knew, Mayer sent his five sons, Amschel, Solomon, Nathan, Karl, and Jacob, to different parts of Europe to dominate the banking sector. He figured if a Rothschild controlled the flow of money in the different parts of Europe, then the Rothschilds would be the most powerful family in Europe. Because money is power, and the one who controls the money has all the power. The Rothschild brothers spread their banking business to different cities, like London, Paris, Vienna, and Naples, they applied the shrewd tactics their father taught them, and it worked. Very soon, the Rothschilds had created the world's first international bank. This Rothschild strategy created the blueprint for how banks open international branches today. International banks exist because the Rothschilds did it first. But they had more banking moves in store. The Rothschilds also invented the concept of using government bonds to raise money for the government. As they controlled more and more money, the Rothschilds became more and more powerful than entire governments. Years later, when countries wanted to set up central banks, guess who they called? The Rothschilds. The Rothschilds helped create central banks in many countries, like the Bank of England and the Banque de France. The next time you walk into a bank, say thank you to the Rothschilds. Although, for every good thing the Rothschilds did, they also did equally brutal things, like making money off the death and slaughter of millions of people. This brings us to the second time the Rothschilds changed reality when they decided the fate of the free world. In the 1800s, Napoleon Bonaparte was on a mission to take over the world. Napoleon was the greatest military strategist on Earth. He could outthink, outwit, and outsmart anyone on the battlefield. The problem with Napoleon was that he wasn't satisfied with merely being a rich soldier in the French army. He wanted to rule the world. And so he launched a campaign to fight and conquer every country in the world till he was ruler of the universe. How crazy is that? At first, people thought Napoleon was overrated. But they started taking him seriously when he kept defeating his enemies on the battlefield. 
At a certain point, it seemed like Napoleon was going to become the most powerful man in the world, even though at the time, the Rothschilds were the most powerful people in Europe. And so, in an attempt to maintain their power, the Rothschilds did something so evil that it could make the devil cry. While the world was fighting against Napoleon, the Rothschilds decided to play both sides. War is expensive. The British needed money to pay soldiers and buy weapons. Any delay in getting the necessary weapons could allow Napoleon's army to rush in and defeat the British. The Rothschilds took advantage of this situation to give quick loans to the British government. If lending to individuals was profitable, imagine how much more profitable lending to a government was. Even though the Rothschild loans came with heavy interest, it was what they did next that showed their diabolical genius. The Rothschilds went behind the backs of the British and offered loans to Napoleon too. By the year 1815, the Rothschilds were supplying Napoleon with gold and silver to buy weapons to attack the British, and at the same time were supplying the British with money for guns and bombs to attack Napoleon. They did this so no matter who won the war, the Rothschilds would be on the winning side. Whoever won would also owe the Rothschilds millions of pounds, meaning the Rothschilds would still be the most powerful banking family in Europe. But their strategy had a fatal flaw. By giving money to both sides, they were indirectly prolonging the war. Each day, hundreds of soldiers were slaughtered on the battlefields because the Rothschilds were funding the war. Eventually, the war ended when Napoleon was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo. The British coalition forces had won, and they owed the Rothschilds a lot of money. At the end of the war, the Rothschilds were even more powerful. Instead of celebrating, the Rothschilds had one more card they wanted to play, and by the time they played that card, their wealth would increase a hundredfold in just 24 hours. This is the third time the Rothschilds played the world. Remember when we said Napoleon was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo? While everyone saw it as a final battle for control of the world, the Rothschilds saw it as an opportunity to increase their wealth, and they did it in the most terrible way. To understand what they did, you need to understand how the stock exchange and bonds work, but we'll explain it as simple as possible. The Rothschilds knew that if Napoleon won the battle, everyone in Britain would be disappointed. And that disappointment would affect the price of the pound sterling on the stock exchange, because the pound sterling is the official currency of the British. On the other hand, if the British won, then the pound sterling would become more valuable and increase in price on the stock exchange. And so, Nathan Rothschild paid a spy to wait on the battlefield to see who won the battle. So the spy watched the battle from his hiding place and saw that Napoleon was defeated. What he did next was legendary. The spy sent a pigeon to Nathan, informing him that the British had won. This meant that the pound sterling was going to be more valuable on the stock market. But nobody else knew the British had won because the official British horse messenger hadn't arrived in London yet. Nathan knew something nobody else did, and he used this information in a way only a heartless man would. Instead of celebrating Britain's victory, Nathan ordered his agents to spread fake news that Napoleon had won. When people heard this fake news, it caused panic selling of the British bonds on the stock exchange. The panic selling caused the price of the pound sterling to drop, and then Nathan the same man who spread the fake news ordered his agents to buy up all the bonds people were selling at rock bottom prices. 24 hours later, when the official government messenger arrived with news that the British had won, it was already too late. The British victory made the pound sterling shoot up in value. And because the Rothschilds had bought so much on the stock market, it made the Rothschilds incredibly wealthy overnight. According to reports, the Rothschilds made the equivalent of $6 billion due to that single move. And this set the stage for the next time Rothschilds changed the world by controlling how people think.
Here's how they did it. The Rothschilds had amassed more money than they could spend in their lifetime, and the five sons taught their children the same lessons their father had taught them. Very soon, the next generation had the opportunity to put those lessons into practice. As the years went by and technology advanced, devices like the radio and television were invented. Information was no longer spread using horseback riders. All you had to do was switch on the radio or TV and you could see and hear news from all over the world. This was a new era, and the Rothschilds saw it as a threat. They had lived their lives by the principle that money is power. But this new generation of Rothschilds realized that information is a new form of power. If you can control the information people hear, you can control what they do. According to sources, the Rothschilds secretly invested in media companies, television networks, Hollywood production studios, and newspapers. The data on exactly how many media companies the Rothschilds own is difficult to find. However, with an abundance of money, they could pay whatever price to gain control of the world's media. The Rothschilds controlled the flow of money for decades and then captured the flow of information as well. They were now in a position of power that no one in the world had ever seen before. The Rothschilds' fifth chess move is right out of their playbook. Apart from media, the Rothschilds made investments in other industries. They formed the Rothschild Group and threw money at the most important companies in the world, from the USA to Japan to Switzerland. Their stakes in these companies gave them more power to steer the world's affairs. If they wanted to, they could influence the price of items and control the demand and supply of products and services. No one exactly knows how much the Rothschilds actually have because they've become extremely private. Although estimates say the Rothschilds own assets worth one trillion dollars or more. Whatever the exact amount, the Rothschilds are definitely sitting on the largest pile of wealth in history. The Rothschilds are the ultimate rags to riches story. They are living proof that money is power and that with enough power, you can rule the world.